some of this stuff in practice. So let me mirror my screen and then we're going to talk about We're not going to talk about the whole thesis, but I pulled out some examples from it that we're going to look at. And then we're also going to look at this, um, another example of the Claisen, the Ireland Claisen. Uh, and then we're going to look at um, other example of the uh, Danishevsky's dying. And then we're going to, on Monday, we'll start a new topic. to here all right so we're gonna we're gonna look at this uh thesis first and let me pull up my bookmarks so in the, uh, this thesis actually discusses um different ways to synthesize uh morphine derivatives right there's a lag on my computer i don't know why come on yes i do know why All right, so these different, uh, these are different alkaloids, right? You can see right here, uh, morphine, which is obviously a very important alkaloid uh, for pain relief, especially if you have severe injuries. If you're in the hospital, more than likely they'll have you uh, on morphine or some other alkaloid. And then you can see the difference in morphine and codeine is right here. Just, this, just that one functional group where R is either alcohol or uh, ether, right? Um, which bring me to, brings me to something that I always used to think was funny when, um, I don't know if y'all, well, y'all, I'm sure y'all remember when Lil Wayne was first, when they found out he was on uh, drinking syrup and all this stuff, he was like, oh, it could be heroin, it could be, you don't know what's in my cup. Not really understanding like the chemistry behind Heroin, codeine, morphine is all the same. This functional group right here is what gets operated on in the, when it is metabolized in the brain. So everything gets reduced down to morphine, codeine, as well as um, uh, heroin. Everything gets reduced down to this molecule where that's the alcohol uh, when it's in the brain, right? When it's being metabolized by the brain. All right, so then this other compound, thebane, is a derivative of mor morphine right here. And then naltrexone, which is another derivative, right? You, you can see the difference. And naltrexone is right here, right? So you have that cyclopropane ring uh, attached to your nitrogen as the alkyl group uh, rather than the methyl group, all right? <clears throat> so the question is, why is this important? Well, morphine is a is a heavily used uh, alkaloid in the medical field. So the way you get it naturally <laughs> is the same way you get heroin, right? You extract it from the from the poppy. But if you want to be able to scale that up and not have to use an entire poppy field, you know, for a gram of morphine you can always do it synthetically. So it's a, it's a very important molecule. And so that's why and, and, and that's the, this thesis goes over multiple methods for the synthesis of morphine. And the reason why it's a challenge is a couple, a couple of reasons. One is the three ring fuse system right here, right? That, that three ring fuse system is, is uh, the backbone of morphine. And then the other part of the other challenging part is to synthesize this ring right here right 
So you really have a, a um, and then you have another ring here, right? So it's really a five ring system. And so the, the challenge is to uh, synthesize or bring those five rings together in as few steps as possible, right? Uh, and I actually, I'm gonna pull up the other paper in a second uh, dealing with um, uh, the synthesis of, of morphine from a different perspective. But I, I wanna talk about this particular uh, document because there are multiple uh, methods in here that involve uh, cyclizations like we've been talking about, um, more especially the Dills Alder and then a Clazen uh, rearrangement. So let me let me scroll down and you can scroll down on the paper to page, let me see what page this is. This is, sorry about that. It's page five in the paper that you downloaded, the one entitled Brock Gupta. It, it should be page five in there. But I wanna show you where the cyclo addition part comes into play. Let me see page seven. Actually go to page seven. <clears throat> All right, so this is that, uh, no, the first, <coughs> excuse me, total synthesis of morphine was accomplished by Gates. Uh, and this was in 1952. And one of the key steps was uh, doing an intra, uh, intermolecular Deals alder. So the methods that we're going to look at today some uh, oscillate somewhere between intermolecular Deals alder reactions and intramolecular Deals alder reactions, right? There's a difference, and we're going to talk about it. Uh, but if you look at page seven, you can see his first his synthesis, where he starts out with this structure in 24, right? And the reagents to convert 24 to 25 are down here. All right, so benzoyl chloride, pyridine, and dioxane, that's A. And then uh, sodium nitrite followed by acetic acid, and then C, acetic acid and palladium on carbon. That's an hydrogenation reaction, and that's gonna get you to uh, 25, right? And then after multiple steps, you can see the two uh, ketones here have been converted into methoxy ethers. And then that ring is also aromatized, right? And then here's the, here's the key step right here that I wanna get to though. So if you look at 27, 27 is the pre, a precursor for a deals all the reaction. Sorry about that. All right, so you got a precursor to your deals all the right there in 27. And if you look from 27 to 28, right, you can actually see that the third ring is built in now. Can you see that? So you went from here, this is your dienophile. Right? And then if you look at the reagents in J, all they did was warm that up with butadiene. And they got the Dills Alder product with the with that stereochemistry. Uh in 66% yield. It doesn't talk about the enantioselectivity, selectivity. Uh, and I'm assuming that they were able to get a single enantiomer, uh, but, and they don't talk about that, about the uh, stereochemistry, but the, what's, uh, what's shown here is the isolated product in 66% yield, right? So you take this and react it with butadiene, which looks like this. Right, we've already seen that. <clears throat> you, you're able to do a deals order to form a C ring of the morphine backbone. And this is this is the first, the very first synthesis of this molecule, right by Gates. Right. 
So again, all these uh, cyclo additions and electrocyclizations and rearrangements that we've talked about, they actually have practical applications. Uh, for, you know, major applications, right? So again, morphine is a, a, a highly sought after alkaloid for in the, in the medical field. So you can imagine that there are companies that would love to be able to synthesize this rather than, uh, you know, having to contract out or have a poppy field behind the factory or whatever, that wouldn't work. Synthesis is the, is the best way to get to this, all right? Um, so with, with that gate synthesis, it kind of opened the door for some other, um, other groups to get in on the action and, and begin, um, trying to synthesize morphine. So let me show you another example. So this is, this was done by the Siganet group, you can see that right here. This is on page, uh, sorry, page 10 in that thesis. So you can scroll down to page 10. This is this uh, particular method was done by the Siganet group and they took a different approach, but one of the, one of the part of their approach was to do an intramolecular diazolder. Zoom in so my my handwriting won't look like chicken scratch, even though it still does. Right. So so is everybody uh do you understand or know what the difference is in something being intramolecular as opposed to being intermolecular? Like what's the difference? Intermolecular is uh, more than one molecule involved in the reaction. Right. Intermolecular right. It rearranges just through that, uh, that one molecule, I guess. Yeah, it's internal, right? One of them is external. So if I were to do uh, a deals alder with just say butadiene and ethylene, right, this would be inter. But if I had a molecule like say this, where I had this, and then I had a conjugated diene here connected to it, and I was able to do a deals alder and cyclize that, then this would be inter, I mean, I'm sorry, intra molecular. Everything is all is self-contained, right? So here you can see right here. This is the, the precursor, right? You can see your diene, you can see your dienophile, uh, and it's set up to do int an intramolecular deals all the reaction. And you see all they did was just heat it up to 215 degrees Celsius, right? And, and again, most of the uh, methods for building up that backbone for morphine, and you can see this is this particular synthesis focused more on the backside, right? And not necessarily worrying about the uh, the um, the nitrogen containing ring up front, like a lot. Some of the other syntheses were they did the the three six membered rings, and then they worried about the five membered furan, and then the nitrogen containing ring at the end. But this particular synthesis is focused on building up the backside with the furan included, right, right here. So that's the, the furan section of that uh, molecule. <clears throat> and so you can see it said that they set it up initially for this deals alder uh, cyclo addition, right? And then from that, once, once they synthesize this 
uh, through the loss of CO2. You can see anytime you see that, that extra moiety like that, you're more than likely gonna lose CO2 in the process. When they heat, so when they were heating this up, this thing was decomposing and exposing that dyeing. And then that's how you get your other uh, six member ring in, 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 intact, right? And then you can also see here that there was a, a second cyclization that happened here to make this ring. But the point is, the point is that you th this involved a intramolecular deals alder as one of the key steps in the formation of the morphine backbone. All right. Um, scroll down to page, let me see. Let's see what page this is. Page 14. This is uh, uh, yet another deals all the strategy, but just by a different group, the Hudlicky group. And um, this is this actually involved uh, two different. This actually involved two different cyclizations, right? So it involved the deals alder, and then from the deals alder, you got multiple products, and so what ends up happening is one of those products rearranges through a coke rearrangement. So let me, let's see if we can look at that. Uh, so this is the initial synthesis. Right again, you can see it's intramolecular. Let me zoom in on that. Right, so you can see that this is an intramolecular synthesis with this being the diene that cyclizes. Right, so these two pieces. Right, so this is your diene here. And then this is your dienophile on this side. Right. So once you cyclize, you get this uh, kind of bridged bicyclic system that's shown 66 right here. And then if you treat, if you deprotect that, which is what this step is right here, D, you can go down and look at the reagents. D is uh, tetrabutylammonium fluorate and then PCC. So a deprotection followed by an alcohol oxidation. So you deprotect and then you oxidize that alcohol, that secondary alcohol up to a ketone, which gets you to 69. But for in 69, you can see <clears throat> that that actually goes through a coke rearrangement e is i think just uh yeah they just warm it to 250. All right so they just take 69 warm it up to 250 degrees celsius and you can see, I, I kind of highlighted it here, but you can see where this, this system is now set up to do a COPE, COPE rearrangement. So it's, COPE is a 3-3 sigma tropic rearrangement too. Right, so the COPE and the Claisen are similar. The difference is that the COPE is not, uh, it, I think we talked about this the other day, that it doesn't involve a, um, an allylic ether, right? It's, a, it's just a carbon system. Let me get back to that page. Sorry about that. Yeah, so it would be it, the coat rearrangement would happen on a substrate, something like this. We're still a 3-3 sigma tropic, 
So it's one, two, three, and then one, two, three, like that. And that rear, that coke rearrangement is actually what led to this product right here, 68. All right, so again, the Dills Alder uh, cyclization gate led us to this product, which then underwent a coke rearrangement and tri-molecular uh, coke rearrangement uh, to give you the product in, in, uh, in 68, right? So um, all of these cyclizations have a, like they have, all have a purpose or application somewhere in some major synthesis. And to be honest, uh, the majority of times, if it's in an organic lab, in a, a synthesis lab, and when you're writing grants, this is like you have to have some type of application for your technology. Now, deals all the technology is not, you know, uh, that's ubiquitous. Everybody uses that. But the point is, like, if I were if I was trying to get funding, and my whole thing was building up uh, morphine analogs through multiple cyclizations, then I need to have some type of way to, to show the utility of that so this is a way to think about that uh when you actually want you don't get money unless you have some method that you're working on at, that has some you some utility past what you're doing on the bench top so that's why more that's why again this morphine synthesis is so important all right so here's another example another deals all the example uh <clears throat> and let me scroll down and give you the right page <coughs> page this is on page 18 right and you can see right here this precursor 84 is the precursor to uh this morphine backbone that's shown in in uh 82 82 Right, so so the, the precursor in 84, one of the steps in getting to the backbone in 83, and then from 83 to 82 is a intramolecular deals all the reaction between this diene right here. Right, this furan and the alkene here. Right, so let me uh Right, so here, here's the the precursor right here, uh, 85, right? And this part, the, the oxazoline part over here, this is just synthesized. Let me see, they have a synthesis up here. Let me show you that. It ain't there. Yeah, they show it down here. All right, so this is how they made the precursor, right? They just took this uh, oxazolidinone and treated it with sodium hydride. That sodium hydride is going to remove that hydrogen from the amine. And then they treated it with this compound, this mesolate right here. That's all it is. And so that's how, that's how they're able to get this fragment on to set it up to do the deals all the reaction. So let me go back up to here, right? So the deals all this taking place again between this diene and then that dienophile. And what they have shown in 86 is like a proposed transition state. You know, normally the transition state for deals all the, we think about it as the diene and the dienophile interacting with each other like so, right? Where the homo of the diene is here. and then the LUMO of the dienophile is here, right? But they actually propose a different type of transition state. It's similar in that the diene and dienophile still have to overlap, uh, but what they propose is like this chair-like transition state in 86, and you can see the chair right here. Right, so they're proposing like a chair-like 
transition state where that overlap happens. And the reason they propose that is because of the observed uh, stereochemistry, which is here, right? And you can see again, the two pieces. This is the piece here from the, from the dienophile. And then this is your furan ring where now you got this fused uh, bicyclic system, right? I don't know if y'all remember that from, from uh, organic two, but if you have a furan, as you're dying and it reacts with uh, some other dienophile like so, right? You're gonna get a, you're gonna get a fused ring system that looks something like this. Let me fix that. Right, so anytime you react something cyclic with something acyclic, you're going to get like in a Diels alder, you're going to get a fused uh, ring system. And that's what happened here. That's why they have the oxygen shown on those wedges like that, because the dienophile came from underneath that ring based on the transition state and caused that, uh, that oxygen bridge to point upward, right? Any questions about this so far? I'm just showing you like some different applications of what we've been talking about. So it, it'll, it'll uh, make sense in a practical manner and not just, you know, from an academic perspective. Hey, All right, so you go, to, go ahead. Are there any... Um... So I was looking on Blackboard. I see the one um, problem set that was on this, but are there additional ones just yeah, on just, this particular subject? Well, no, not not the um, other problem sets deal more with the, uh, when we start talking about alkene. The second one is, is over that section we do on alkenes. Uh, but the first one is molecular orbital theory. It, there's just no, I don't think we put any necessarily any reactions on there like the clays and or the deals all or whatever. We just took the, it was more centered around the, the concept of molecular orbital theory, like the orbital overlap, uh, the molecular orbital diagrams, um, the reactivity when you perturb the homo or the lumo. Okay, yeah. All right. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Let's look at a couple more examples in this thesis and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on to something else. Uh, so again, you can see here, one of the, one of the uh, issues that Hutlicky had was that that first synthesis uh, that, he, that he completed it had the wrong stereochemistry, right? So that, that was, that's why he had to do this particular uh, synthesis that we just showed with the, you know, going through the transition state and all that, because uh, the initial synthesis had the wrong stereochemistry. But let's look at another group, um, the Rodrigo group. And this is a, a come on, man. There's a lag between my iPad and my uh, computer. It's coming though, yeah. So the Rodrigo group did this intramolecular Diels alder and then uh, he also included a cope rearrangement so that he can get, you know, the maximum amount of product because his, his Diels alder uh, addition actually gave two products, right? So he gave, he, he, this is his strategy. So he wanted to use a compound like 96, which we call a mixed ketal. Right. And it's a, it's a, um, if you remember from organic two, we talked about acetals and hemiacetals. It may be it may be rusty for you because uh, that may have been a while back. Uh, 
but a, a ketal is a type of acetal. Do y'all remember that? If you take a, a it's like a, if you take an acetal, you can take a ketone like so, and two moles of uh, alcohol, and then you get out a acetal. And then if you take the same ketone, but you do one mole of alcohol, then you get out a hemiacetal. Like so. So when, it, when you see that term ketal, all it is is a type of acetal, right? When, and the fact that it's mixed means that the two OR groups are different, right? So using, let me get, Using this fluorinated uh, reagent here, I had looked at it. Hold up. Hold up. So that BTIB is bis trifluoroacetoxy iodobenzene, right? And uh, that is a that's a coupling reagent. So if you look right here where it says A, they added in that BTIB, and you're actually able to dearomatize that ring and attack it using uh, nucleophilic aromatic substitution, where you add in that oxygen to the aromatic ring, right? And so that gives me 96, which is the precursor to my Diels Alder reaction. And this is actually really, really um, innovative method because now you have all of your all your other architecture in place. You have your other alkenes in place that you can set use to set up other cyclization reactions. So this is a very clever way of doing this, right? And so now he's able to set up that backside with those three rings. You can see it in '97. Uh, through a through an intramolecular Diels Alder reaction. Right? But 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 not only did he get 97, right, but he also got some of this compound here, which is 98. And then so 98, he just warmed that up and he was able to get that to rearrange through a clasin. A Claisen rearrangement to give you 97, right? So again, uh, very clever way of doing this by first uh, doing the deals all day and getting the right product. And then even with the, the other product in 98, he was able to uh, rearrange that using the Claisen and then get more of 97. So really clever way of, of, uh, of doing that. Uh, and this is from the Rodrigo group. And let me find. So this is a this is another this is an extension of that, right? Where instead of using um, this simple uh, diene here, the alcohol that's shown right here, right? He kind of used a more complicated uh, substrate down here in one hundred, but with the same results, right? He was able to again, get that mixed ketal start material <laughs> between 99 and 100, between these two pieces, right? So your mixed ketal is gonna end up on this carbon right here, just like above. And then now you're dying. Let me see if I can, if I can draw that. Uh, so this is what your mixed ketal would look like. there and then oh in 
more space. O and me, and then here is O, and the rest of this ring over here. Like that, right? So that's your that's your uh this is what the mixed key tail would look like. And then it's this molecule that, that's gonna cyclize through an intramolecular deals alder to give you uh 101 and 102 and 103, right? So you basically get three different products from that. But 101 and 102, uh you can see the difference here is the stereochemistry, right? You see the R group right here on a on a dash and the R group right here on a wedge. That's the difference, and that's that's a consequence of how your orbitals are overlapping in the transition state, right? So you got a 13% of 101, 11% of 102. The good thing about this structure is that you can separate those out, right? Because those are diastereomers. If they were mirror images, you'd be stuck. But the fact that they're diastereomers, you can actually separate out 101 and 102 physically, like you're just using a column. Uh, and then 103, you can heat that up and do a Coke rearrangement to get you to 104, right? So you can take 102 and then heat 103 up to get you to 104 and then finish the synthesis uh, with some subsequent steps after that, All right? But the, but the point is that that deals order is the key step in building up that framework. And if you look at it, this is even, this is even more efficient than the previous synthesis because you really only have, you put two pieces together and you're able to form all of your backbone, right? Four, four rings from two substrates. So you couple the two substrates, 99 and 100, and then with the Diels alder, the intramolecular Diels alder, you're able to get all four of those rings formed, which I think is, is pretty amazing. All right, so that's the that's um, just some examples of like how how these reactions that we talked about from a molecular orbital perspective are applied to real situations and real problems like the synthesis of morphine. Uh, I had another paper I wanted to show you real quick. Um, and I'll make sure I upload it to, to Blackboard, but I wanna show you another paper. Uh, is it here? Yeah, so let me, I just, I don't I haven't downloaded this yet, but I wanted to show you the, the uh, Danishevsky's diene because it's another uh, deals all the substrate, but you can see it's highly electron rich. So you use Danishevsky's diene to do deals all the reactions where you want to control uh, which end of the diene reacts with the dienophile. So depending on what you put here on your R as your R group on your dienophile, that's going to determine uh, which which product you get, right? You can see right here, you get this XO product as one diastereomer, right? Where you can see uh, how this reacted. You see what R and the methoxy group are opposite to one another. And then if you change R to something else, it will change the electronics of the system. So the R and the methoxy may be on the, uh, the uh, product may be flipped uh, because of the electronics. So the Danishevsky's dying is a, is a way to control the electronics of a deals alder reaction so that because you can look here i can't well i can annotate it this way uh if you look here right this this end is electron rich so this carbon right here is going to be that's a that's a lowercase green d a delta 
it's going to be partially negative, right? And then the other carbon will be partially positive, right? So with that, with those electronic considerations, depending on what type of di dienophile you react with that Danishevsky's dying, you can control like how the ring cyclizes, which, which carbons actually bond to each other. Uh, and then there's one other, oh, sorry about that. One other paper that I wanted to show you, which is the, um, an example of the Ireland clays in the way. Yeah, here we go. And this was done a long time ago. This is the group, this is was my PhD advisor, uh, Morkin. Uh, Ireland clasin is a little bit different uh, than the clasin because it's done on like an ester derivative, right? And you can see here with the Ireland clasin, the, what I want to point out from this paper is this, right? You get these uh, really high diastereomer ratios, right? And you get these precursors, uh, these uh, uh, alpha substituted uh, ester or acid precursors. And you can you can see immediately that this is a precursor it can be a precursor for a different reaction, right? So this paper I'll, I'll put into uh, into Blackboard. It's a fairly efficient way of doing the Ireland clays and add is based on some technology that uh, hadn't been used before to do it, um, because what they the, the what they let me see if they show the mechanism. They don't show the mechanism, but the, the principle that is that work that this reaction works on is that this ester actually becomes an enone. So the double bond gets shifted to here and then that's where your rearrangement happens. Let me show you uh, Real quick and then we got to stop. I'll share my screen after I write it. So this is the substrate, but then when you treat this with uh, with rhodium, which is the catalyst, you actually end up with a O-bound rhodium because you, you actually end up adding a rhodium hydride. So the hydrogen is going to add here, right, to the uh, beta carbon. So you end up with this, a rhodium enolate. And then that's where your clasin can take place, the Ireland clasin, right? That's where that's able to take place. It's, it's coming up. It's just, that's just a lag. Man, this computer is slow as molasses, right? So now, Now you're able to do that 3-3 three, three sigma tropic rearrangement on this substrate right here. Right, so then it's this carbon here. So, right, and that's what gives rise to these, uh, it's these uh, carboxylic acid products. Let me go back and share that again. Well, that's where you get these carboxylic acid products here, right? And then the diastereomer ratio is pretty high 11 to 1, 23 to 1, 25 to 1, depending on the substrate. Uh, and the reason why, if, if you look at the precursors, I mean, look at the products, you know, where they have these stereo centers set like uh, back to back like this, you wonder why that's important. 
Well, these are precursors to other types of compounds. And one of the compounds that you could uh, potentially think of this type of technology being used for is the synthesis, if you're doing a total synthesis, or something like discodermalide, which is an anti-cancer molecule, right? So you can see that type of motif all the way through here where you have these uh, stereo centers kind of set, uh, the methyl groups kind of set to each other either in a trans or uh, a cis or a trans stereo chemistry. So I just wanted to, to point that out to make sure that we understood that you know, anytime we're studying a topic, there's always some, there's always gonna be some connection to like a real world application. Um, to make sure that we get that, to make sure that we know that it's not just on paper, all right? So we gotta, we gotta stop here. We're gonna pick up on Monday, uh, starting with olefination. And I'll, send, I'll um, send you some information over the weekend about that. And I'll put uh, this paper and this paper, once I download it, I'll, I'll put both of those papers in the, uh, in the course notes folder for today. All right, any questions about anything? No, sir. All right, I'll see you guys on uh, on Monday. Okay, have a good you. weekend. All right, thanks. Y'all have a good weekend too.